Hey everyone, welcome back to Art a la carte. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to draw kind of a really cool water dragon. I've done lots of videos on how to draw dragons and I'll leave links to all those videos bring right there, you can go check them out. So if you like this one, you might like the other ones as well. Since my last dragon, which was a baby fire dragon, I asked you guys kind of what next kind of type of dragon and got a lot of requests for a water dragon. So let's do a really cool water dragon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create um, a really cool depth to this. I'm gonna start off first with the head of my dragon right down here. And I'm just going to kind of just block that off with a circle. I'm not worried about any detail. Now, in my mind, of course, your water dragon can look like however you want it. So, um, but this is just how I'm going to draw this dragon. And it might not be the way I would draw every single water dragon, but this is just one type of water dragon that I'm going to draw. And it's going to be kind of more of the snake-like dragon. So I'm going to create a coil. And so this is the backbone and coil of the snake, and I want him really kind of coiling and coming towards us. So I'm gonna take this backbone coil, I'm gonna wrap it up and around, and I'm gonna pretend I have invisible glasses and just see how this coil would work as it wraps around like that. And we'll see how that works. Maybe I might even put a little more twist in right down there and bring this up just a little bit. That's what we're drawing in pencil, so we can kind of just work this out a little bit as it comes out towards us. Yeah, I like that. Okay. It looks like a lot of crazy lines, but that's the fun of art. Craziness, turning crazy chaos into something cool. So let's block in our dragon here. Let me erase the lines out of his head so I can see him a little bit better. That's the hard part about this, is keeping track of what line goes where. So let me figure out my dragon. So I'm gonna put his snout in here, and I'm going to give him a very long snout. So I'm gonna give him just that uh, kind of a really cool head and mouth. I really want this to kind of be the focal point of him. So I'll just kind of create and gesture that out there. And because I'm going to have a lot going on here with these quails, I want his head to have a lot of big detail in it. So I really want to spend some good time here blocking in that detail. So I'm going to have like a fin kind of coming out the side of his head here. And then I have a second fin coming out over here. And then some kind of really cool barbs coming up top of his head back here. This is the fun, where you just kind of create however you want to, um, what you want your sea serpent and dragon to look like. I'm going to create his eye socket right in there. Other eye socket coming in here on the other side of his skull. Kind of want to give him that kind of a, a fish mouth. I mean, he looked like a salmon or something. They just have this really cool interlocking jaw right there. Kind of give it that to him, and then give him just that really cool tongue right there, kind of coming out. What's fun is if you draw um, imaginary creatures like dragons or you know whatever kind of creature you want to imagine, taking small elements of animals that really do exist in that environment and giving it to them really can help um, create uh, something natural about them, which can make you think, oh, you know, maybe they almost could be real, you know, and exist. And so by giving him more like the teeth that you would find in an, a, a nautical animal, like a, a fish or an eel, more of that barb for catching something slimy, gives him just a little bit more authenticity. Um, makes him a little bit more valid, like he could actually survive in his, in his environment. Okay, so I don't want to get too caught up in the detail yet, but I have him blocked off pretty well. But I want to get in a little bit more detail on the rest of him before I start just going in with some, some major timed detail. So I want to decide if I want to give him any kind of appendages, legs or flippers or things like that. 
So I want to keep this kind of slender, kind of snake-like appearance for him. And as it gets closer down to his tail, it's going to start thinning out just a little bit. So far, because I want to put a little bit of a fin at the end. Just building them out, and again, this is all just the build up stage, so you can go and change things up however you like. We're just kind of blocking them in a little bit here. All right, so I have in my picture a lot of empty space here and a lot of empty space here. So I want to do something that's going to um, create some, um, some fill in here. I could put some prey that he's chasing, maybe a fish or a whale or something <laughs> that he's, he's going after. Um, but I really want to kind of have it center on him. So I'm going to actually give him um, wings. And yeah, that'll be kind of fun. I mean, he is a water dragon, but you know, maybe he likes to fly above the water every once in a while. So I'm gonna have to build these wings, the wing appendage come out. And the wings could also be used, you know, as kind of flipper fins too. So I'm gonna kind of build the bone structure first. So I'll have one this way, and then I'm going to have the other one kind of coming out over here. And because you're creating your own anatomy of your own creature, um, one, it's a little easy because, you know, you don't have to follow the actual anatomy of what that creature really is like, but two, you have to remember, how does this exactly work? Otherwise, people who look at your art are going to say, hey, that, that's, that's off. She indicated in this one that there was three panels here and then this bone, and there's only two here, and they'll find those mistakes. They know. They, they will. They'll find them. But you can have just some really cool, dramatic look with this by kind of creating that sense of depth and motion. we've got a little bit of his wings. So now I want to decide, I kind of have to come to the decision whether I want to give him any kind of claws, which you know, I just kind of think he would need them if he's going to catch something. So, but maybe not really thick, bulky things because I want to keep him kind of like this um, slippery serpent kind of thing. So I'll have it kind of stay with that same Kind of feel, and we'll just give him these kind of like little hook claws. And because I want to keep him um, kind of uh, aquatic, I'm going to put webbing in between them. So he's got these really cool claws, but they're webbed. And then I'll have this one. If it comes around that side, stretching down here like this, maybe it's kind of reaching towards us. Totally a mermaid guard dog. So there I have my basic buildup of my water dragon. Really, this is not an easy thing to make a tutorial out of because yours could look so totally different than mine, and that would be totally perfect. It would be awesome because these are our imaginary creatures. Um, you can make them look however you want. When you get into the world of, of imagination and, and fantasy and things like that, then really it's all opened up for you to design and create however you like. And that's one of the reasons I so very much enjoy drawing things that um, are mythological or um, made up because you can break any rule that there is. Who's to say this water dragon can't breathe fire? So probably the biggest thing that I could teach you, the goal of this 
tutorial um, isn't so much that you draw this exact dragon, but it's that you see how my brain works when I'm creating something unknown, never been made before. Um, and how you just begin to build that up, begin to think through that process. Hopefully this encourages you in um, your creation of your creatures. And again, I would love to see those uh, those drawings that you do. So many of you guys post those on Facebook or Instagram, and I love looking at them. It's so much fun. So thank you for doing that. If you haven't done that before, I'll put the links to, to both those places in the description box below. If you want to see a little bit more of my personal art where I'm not, I don't teach, but um, I kind of just videotape. Um, doing a little bit more in-depth artwork, head over to my secondary channel called Up in the Attic, and you can check out all those videos too. I'll put the link to that in the description box below as well. So until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Keep drawing. Bye-bye.